Good morning, everyone. We're, we've just received word that Senator Blumenthal is about a minute out, so we're going to uh, start the program, uh, just do some int introductions, and then we'll get going, okay? First of all, the sun is shining on Waterbury today, as of, uh, as of about 10 minutes ago, which is wonderful news. We're honored to be joined here in Waterbury for his second appearance, and it's our Region 1 EPA Administrator, David Cash, is here. But obviously, um, we are thrilled at this announcement today. We have our beloved Congresswoman Johanna Hayes is here with us. We have Commissioner Katie Dykes from Deep, who is here with us. Also very familiar with uh, Waterbury Brownfield projects. Uh, with EPA today is the uh, Public Affairs Director and a dear friend, Doug Guttrow, is here with us today. Nancy Barmakian, Barmakian. Hi, Nancy. How'd I do? Barmakian. Thank you. Uh, Jim Bird, Katie Deng. Uh, these are all familiar names for all of us here. Uh, this one might, I might screw this one up a little bit. William Lar Larrabee, Larverier. Hi, Bill. Nice to see you. Lissandro Suarez, Charlotte Gray. Thank you. Also, we have with us today our, our uh, fire chief, uh, Terry Ballou, our assistant fire chief, Hob Lopez. And, you know, I just take a moment to talk about uh, the, these two uh, men and, and this Waterbury Fire Department. As you well know, this uh, site was uh, uh, engulfed in massive fire uh, about a week ago. Uh, the entire Waterbury Fire Department responded here and spent the weekend here, uh, about 72 hours plus. And, uh, you know, the, the best news is, is that they were able to get this fire under control quickly. Uh, no serious injuries, uh, thankfully. Um, keep the contaminants and the uh, s um, so forth contained. EPA's response and DEEP's response was amazing. Within just a few short hours of the first call, they were both on scene uh, monitoring air quality control, uh, keeping our residents uh, safe and secure. And, you know, we're really proud of the Waterbury Fire Department, uh, not only for their efforts last week, but for the work that they've done particularly in these uh, factory fires uh, over the years. Uh, to me, it's amazing uh, that uh, we've had uh, these incidents and quite frankly, um, it's just amazing that no one has been uh, seriously injured and, and hurt, thankfully. Um, but the men and women of the Waterbury Fire Department are very well trained and know how to handle these types of incidents when you're in a city like Waterbury with our legacy of industrial um, background and you know brass factories and uh, abandoned factories and so on, uh, this is a very dangerous uh, job that these firefighters have and I'm really proud of them, I have to tell you. I'm proud of the work that they've, that they've done, not only on this site, but the other sites as well. And speaking of which, we have uh, Mayor Passero, who is a a career firefighter and now the mayor of New London with us today, Mike Passero. We have Ricardo Rodriguez, who is our brownfield manager at NP COG, and I can tell you what a great job he does. And we also, of course, have uh, other elected officials here with us today, including uh, the town manager, Mary Calorio of the town of Killingly. Thank you for being with us today, Mary. We also, uh, Without further ado, Senator Blumenthal is here. Thank you, Senator. What an honor to have you with us today. We have our State Representative Geraldo Reyes here with us today. Jerry, this is his district. Jerry's as familiar with this site as anyone else. As, uh, when he was in my office many years ago, we actually started this site. And uh, it's going to be a good feeling, Jerry, to be in the, in the State House and see this project coming to fruition. But it all evolves around the collaboration and the cooperation 
uh, between the two agencies that are represented here today with their leadership, and that's EPA and Connecticut Deep. And without their support, understanding, assistance, we wouldn't be here today celebrating uh, what we're about to talk about. But also, very importantly uh, to understand is Connecticut DECD. You know, without the support and assistance of DECD, without the governor, quite honestly, without the governor's support, this site, the site across the street known as Animat, the downtown site known as Freight Street Redevelopment, all of these projects, you heard the saying, right? You're probably tired of it sometimes. It takes a village. Well, it starts at the federal level, the state level, and then all of the offices involved. And without the support of all these people, these projects just wouldn't be able to come to fruition. They do take time, and that's one of the things that uh, is challenging all the time. But once they happen, Watch out. And Waterbury is a prime example of that with the most brownfield projects going on in the state right now for quite some time. I will now call on our Region 1 Administrator David Cash for some remarks. Come on up, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Mayor O'Leary. It's so great to be here in Waterbury again. Uh, first, let's just start. Close your eyes and listen. Often when I'm at events like this, we're listening to birds chirping and stuff like that. But listen to that. That is the sound of change. That is the sound of taking a blighted, hazardous site and turning it into something beautiful. And it only happens it only happens when you have the partnerships and connection between the state, federal, city, community groups, the state legislature. It's just a beautiful sound to hear, uh, especially at this site that we know uh, a week and a half ago uh, was an incredibly scary event happening, uh, which is not a surprise at these kind of sites. Uh, so it's wonderful to be here today. Um, thank you so much, Congresswoman Hayes. It's fantastic to see you again here. And uh, Senator yeah. Blumenthal, uh, without your leadership and the leadership of uh, Senator Chris Murphy and uh, Congresswoman DeLauro, there wouldn't be the kind of funding that EPA is getting now, unheard of funding, not just once in a generation for EPA, once in an agency history. Between the Inflation Reduction Act and the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, Congress had has, has had the wisdom to uh, have EPA distribute to states and municipalities over a hundred billion, that's with a B, a hundred billion dollars, to lift up communities, to make our air clean, our water clean, and to provide the economic development catalyst that's so important in these kinds of cities and towns all over the country. In fact, the bipartisan infrastructure law just on the brownfield side this year, $192 million, almost 40 million of that coming to New England. That is huge. And, and none of this could happen. I got to say, I've been on the job now at EPA for a year and four months or so. I came here a year ago, which was so exciting. And I know I spoke highly of them then but now I've gotten to know them for more than a year. The staff at EPA is just remarkable. The mayor introduced a couple of folks, Doug Guttrow, Charlotte Gray, Daryl Swatz, Nancy Barmakian, Frank Gardner, who I don't think is here, Jim Byrne, Katie Dang, William Leverayer, uh, Dory Parr, and Lissandro Suarez. Give it up for the EPA crowd. Just fantastic, just fantastic folks to work with. And of course, as I mentioned, we were standing on this same spot a year ago as we uh, celebrated a $150,000 brownfield grant to the city. I think you'll hear a grant today that has a couple of more zeros. We're pretty excited about that. And again, as the mayor mentioned, we had EPA staff on this site a week and a half ago as we all responded collectively uh, to the urgent uh, fire that, that happened here. 
We know that Waterbury and other communities in Connecticut and New England were drivers of economic development 150, 200 years ago. They brought industry, manufacturing, jobs. They built the communities that all of these mill cities throughout New England thrived upon. But those are now exactly those same sources of economic development and community health are now deteriorating buildings, hazardous sites, toxic pollution, public safety, high eyesores and community, uh, c community not assets, but community bads. And our job is to turn them into goods. And we do that with Connecticut, which has a huge history of innovation and seizing opportunities, turning these old mills, these old industries into new engines of economic development. And Connecticut, uh, like so many other states in New England, has really taken advantage of the Brownfields program, used our funding, used the technical assistance to really drive change. And what's so remarkable about Brownfields, and I believe I said this last time I was here, and it's no different now, is this is so beyond a win-win situation. This is a win-win-win-win-win-win-win situation. We are abating pollution. We're providing a parcel for redevelopment. We're creating new spaces for industrial, commercial, and residential redevelopment. We're removing a public safety hazard. We're creating local jobs in disadvantaged communities. We are turning a bad thing into a good thing, an economic engine in our communities. So we're here to celebrate seven communities that have earned uh, Brownfield's funding. I'm not going to go through them now. The basic uh, plan for today is we're going to hear some of our other speakers. Then I'll come back up here with the congresswoman and the senator, and we'll talk about the, uh, the grants that are going to be given to each of the communities, each in turn, just like Waterbury. There's New London and others that are going to be driving economic development and turning these bads into goods. So why don't I give the space back to the mayor. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Next, we're going to call up uh, our Congresswoman Johanna Hayes. Johanna, come on up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's great to be here today, and I'm really excited to see so many people from the region here to join because Waterbury can truly be a leader on this issue about brownfield remediation and ways to just creatively reclaim this space. So really excited to have so many partners. That $40 million number that you heard for New England was not by accident. It was as a result of Congress, of your, the members who represent this region fighting really hard to make sure that people knew that we had skin in the game, that we needed the resources just like other communities in the country, and that brownfield remediation was really stifling our communities. That the economic development, the community development, all of those things could not happen until we invested in these spaces. And these projects are slow. They take so much time, so much money, so much effort because millions of dollars just to clean up the sites and get back to zero before you even start to build. But this project in particular is really important to me. I grew up in this area, and one of the things that I talk about often on my committee, I'm the ranking member on the Committee of Nutrition, when we talk about brownfields, I talk about a lot of the work that my community has done. But there used to be a sign on the fence uh, about a block back that warned kids not to play in that area because of the soil, not to walk on this grass over here. and. That is debilitating. When you grow up in a community and there's no open spaces for kids to play and there's a lot that looks like it, it, it's an area to play and there's a caution signs everywhere. So really going back and cleaning up these sites and reclaiming these areas is especially important. I'm also very happy to know that part of this funding will go to the Brass City Food Hub for their development. I think that we've seen just how fragile our food systems are, how the issue of hunger has affected people all over in every community, but also how access to fresh, healthy foods is most important for people in marginalized communities because many of them do not have that access. And Waterbury has done a tremendous job between fisheries, between Brass City um, uh, Food Hub over here, the greenhouse, 
all of these things that say it is important to us that the people who live here also have access to those same types of opportunities, also have access to fresh and healthy foods. And that only happens with partners who also believe that. So I thank the mayor, our st state representatives who really have fought side by side with us to make sure that people recognize the dignity and the humanity of the people who live in this areas and not only that we recognize them that we put the resources to build these communities back up so excited to be back here once again to really celebrate uh, these types of resources this type of a win-win-win that really addresses all of the areas that we know have have just gone into disrepair and it felt like for decades, no one was paying attention, but people have been paying attention, and the work has been do done behind the scenes. So really excited that now the entire community really can appreciate and understand what is happening here. Thank you so much. Thank you. My dear. Thank you, Congresswoman. Without further ado, I now call on Senator Richard Blumenthal. Come on up, sir. Uh, as, as the mayor just noted to me, I am here without a cane. Uh, first public event since uh, eight weeks ago and uh, broke my leg in the Yukon Huskies victory parade. You'll remember what a magnificent event that was. It was great for everyone except maybe me. Uh, and uh, anyway, I'm here uh, on my own two feet. Uh, let me just say, first of all, uh, thanks to the firefighters, as the mayor mentioned, who often have to go to these blighted properties to put out fires that result when they are abandoned. People use them as temporary shelter. They start fires, and the fires spread. And to our fire and police who are here today uh, in Waterbury and all around the state of Connecticut, my thanks for the great work that you do day in and day out to keep us safe. Uh, I also want to thank the mayor. Uh, there has been no more avid, assertive champion of cleaning up brownfields than Mayor Neil O'Leary of Waterbury. And there's been no more, no more supportive local government and state representative delegation. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, State Representative Breas and Paul Pernaruski, the head of the council here in Waterbury, uh, because Waterbury knows from its own experience the toll that blighted areas can take on the economic vitality and the health of a city. Now, let's be very blunt. Out of this 8.8 .8 million, Three million is going to the Naugatuck Valley Council of Governments. Another one million is coming to Waterbury. That means about half of this 8.8 .8 million is coming to this area. Now, what does that say about Waterbury and the Valley? It knows what's important and it fights for it. It's not just Representative Hayes and myself fighting in Washington. Communities have to want this money to get it. And I want to say thank you to uh, all of the communities, New London, East Hampton, Killingly. They've all earned this money by showing they can use it productively to benefit the health, the economy, the jobs of their area. Uh, you know, this investment is the biggest, the biggest ever, 8.8 .8 million in Connecticut's history in brownfields. Let me repeat, this money sets a record. It's a good record to accomplish a cleanup of areas that otherwise would be abandoned, they'd be blighted, they would cause health and economic damage, and this investment, the largest in Connecticut's history from the federal government, is only the beginning, only the beginning of what we need in Connecticut and the country. And let's put an end to the kind of threats that we saw very recently, last week, 
to put these kind of programs on the chopping block. There are forces in Washington, D.C. and in this country that want to say no to these kinds of programs. We need more, not less, of Brownfield's investment because they can not only reclaim land and property for good uses, but protect the health, the economic vitality of the areas that they serve. So uh, this is, as uh, our EPA regional administrator said, a win, 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 win. I could go on with a few more wins. It is a win multidimensionally for Connecticut and the country. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator Blumenthal. Next, I call on our Commissioner of Deep, Katie Dykes. Come on up, Katie. Thank you. Great to be with everyone today. I just want to add to the comments uh, that we've heard. First off, huge thanks to our congressional delegation. I love seeing Connecticut get our unfair share of federal funding. Um, it's from everything from helping to solve climate change and grow our clean economy, but especially um, to address the legacy of contamination in our former industrial sites. Um, this is the beating heart of the, of the Industrial Revolution here in Waterbury, here across Connecticut. Um, and we know how, how the future um, economic opportunities that we can unleash when we can address that legacy contamination. Um, and DEEP is proud to be a part of that. Um, we're helping uh, support and working closely with EPA on these types of brownfield uh, remediations, but there's so much to do. And we're going to need every dollar and more to help re repurpose and bring these sites to life. I, I want to um, recognize some folks uh, who are here, really, really special part of our department. Um, our emergency response unit, Rick Swan, is here, um, and members of his team who are hiding out back there. Um, they are the, uh, the unsung heroes uh, of our department. Um, a lot of folks don't really know too much about what they do, but they are emergency responders who come to the most complicated scenes, including uh, this site when it caught fire a week ago, and they help to uh, try to mitigate and address on an emergency basis some of the worst environmental contamination from entering our environment. Um, they are on the front lines of responding to some really fragile locations all across our state and helping to try to keep us safe. And every time the phone rings um, and I see, you know, pictures that they're sending me of another industrial site going up in flames, it tells me that we have to work harder and faster to be able to get these sites that have been sitting dormant for decades, as, as the Congresswoman said, um, on track to get cleaned up um, so that we don't see any more of these types of fires occurring. Um, and so these dollars are going to be really important for that. Um, but so are things that we're doing at the state level. And so I just want to note uh, about uh, three years ago, uh, Mayor O'Leary, you, you helped champion some legislation that we were able to get through the legislature to help us sunset the Transfer Act um, and shift to our release-based system uh, that 48 other states have in place to help speed up the uh, uh, remediation of contaminated sites. And, and Mayor, um, we are not, uh, we're continuing to make progress on the regulations that we need to shift to that more forward-looking cleanup uh, program. And we think that that's going to really uh, unlock a lot more uh, economic development and help take these uh, contaminated sites and move them towards a better future. Um, and in addition, I want to just thank um, Representative Reyes. Um, we are just in the waning hours of the legislative session. Um, you know, we've had some, we've seen some really uh, uh, important environmental legislation, unfortunately, not, not move forward. But one of the bills that I'm most excited about and, and feel uh, very passionate about personally is our environmental justice bill. Um, Senate Bill 1147 got, a, got approved through the, uh, through the Senate last week. I hope that it will get um, a, an equally uh, warm welcome in the House. Um, I know Representative Reyes has been an incredible champion for that bill. And I think that that's really, really important that we have a framework like that in place so that when this site um, gets uh, ready to move forward to its next uh, future that, um, and, and any sites in our environmental justice communities um, that are going through permitting, that we'll be able to consider the cumulative impacts of, of, of any uh, environmental harms that could come from some affecting facilities if they're proposed in these locations. It's the least that we can do for our communities and for our kids. So I hope that we'll see that one move forward as well. Really proud to be here. Again, uh, 
um, uh, Administrator uh, Cash, we, we hope that to see more checks um, coming into Connecticut and we're proud to be a part of this event. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Dykes. Also part of uh, Commissioner's uh, team that has been so supportive of Waterbury uh, that are here with us today is Mark Berno, Greg Ambrose, and Banu Chandri. Thank you to them for all your support and uh, you guys are amazing. Uh, without further ado, we have our state representative who is, uh, represents this district, Jerry Reyes, with us today. Come on up, Jerry. Good morning, everybody. First, I'd be remiss if I don't personally thank the first responders of the city of Waterbury, police, fire. This is personal. I live be right behind that greenhouse. There is my neighborhood. Thank you for saving this neighborhood. What you guys did was nothing short of heroic. I certainly appreciate it, as do constituents of Waterbury. Thank you. So I've been invested in the South End of Waterbury for over 50 years. I'm one of those people that never would have dreamed that I would be standing here in the midst of all this beehive of activity here in the South End. Some of it happens for reasons we can't explain, but at the end of the day, it's all about fighting for environmental justice. I'll be brief in my remarks. As I said earlier, this is personal. I want to leave this place better than I found it. Our, our, our city was built on manufacturing. Now our, our efforts are to clean up the residual of that manufacturing, that golden manufacturing era that's left. And they weren't as responsible as we have to be. We have to leave it better than we found it. And I am honored and pleased to be among all these folks that are working for environmental justice. And I would be remiss, again, if I don't thank the federal, the state, and the municipal leadership under Mayor O'Leary for seeing what needed to get done and getting it done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. As you heard mentioned, the president of our Board of Aldermen is here, Paul Pernaruski. Come on up and say a few words, Paul. Thank you. I, I'll be very brief because almost everything has been said, but it is great to be here today uh, to, uh, on the occasion of the grant coming in. Um, and I want to thank all of the federal and state officials who made it possible. Obviously, the leadership of Mayor O'Leary, who has shown that the city knows how to use these funds and can actually accomplish something with them and is cleaning up these brownfields. As Representative Ray has said, who, by the way, is a great advocate for this community and the people of the 75th District, they're very lucky to have him here representing them because he stands up for them over and over again and he brings, he brings home things for them to make this stuff possible. But as he said, these sites drove Waterbury in its heyday and for decades they were the lifeline of Waterbury. Unfortunately, over the past few decades they have been bringing Waterbury down. But projects like this to clean this site up and repurpose it will make these sites once again the driver of success here in Waterbury. And we look forward to being back here for the ribbon cutting. Congresswoman Hayes and I were just talking about that when this site is being repurposed. So thank you to everyone who made this possible today and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. I also want to acknowledge Alderwoman Belinda Weaver is here with us today, Belinda, and Alderman Jeff Hunter. Waterbury Development Corporation oversees many of these projects, and uh, the director is here with us today, Tommy Hyde. Thank you, Tommy. Before I call Mr. Cash back up for the, um, the fun part, which is the awarding of the checks, I want to recognize one great guy who works for the Public Works, and he's standing right behind me holding these tents down, Carlos <laughs> Torres. Thank you, Carlos. Oh, it's a, that's the most important job here. Okay, Mr. Cash, the moment is yours. Come on up, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor. This is just phenomenal. What a great uh, celebration of investing in our, in our communities. I just wanted to kind of uh, pick on one of the uh, points that Congresswoman Hayes said. She was talking about the sign on the fence and what a kid might feel walking by that sign. You know, we talked about the win, 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 wins. And I know that I 
said this last year, but there was a, a mayor up in uh, 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 Massachusetts who I was at a Brownfields event, and I did my win-win-win thing, and he got up and said, yeah, that's all great, but here's the win that we're looking for. We're looking for that kid that's walking by and sees a building like this, that sees a fence, that is fearful of playing in the park on the soil, sees a sign that says beware, and that kid is wondering, what kind of community do I live in? What kind of value do I have? And then the win that we're looking for is what this site will look like when it's been redeveloped and the kid walks by and there's jobs that are gonna be in the future for that kid. Maybe there's a playground, there's stores. That's when the kid says, ah, I know what my community is and how they're supporting me. So thank you for that. I also just wanted to note, we're gonna start giving out the checks. This is the fun part. And each of those checks represents investing in America, investing in our kids, investing in our community, investing in jobs. And here's what's the amazing thing about Brownfields. Each of these checks, the $8.8 .8 million in Connecticut, is a catalyst. I think Commissioner Dykes used the word, will unlock, will unleash. The numbers are varied all over the country, but there are times when there are Brownfield projects that the federal dollars that Congress has so wisely given to communities is multiplied by 10 times by the private sector, 50 times. There's a sample I saw that it was over 100 times. So a small amount of federal dollars that unlocks uh, private sector development that can lift up these communities in pretty fundamental ways. It's so, so exciting. So when you think about each of these checks that we're about to give out, think about them that way that this might be a $500,000 check, but it's gonna to lead to $10 million of investment, $10 million of communities, $10 million of kids having wins as they walk by these new developments. Okay, so if I could have up Congresswoman Hayes and Senator Blumenthal to join me here. Our first check, uh, our, I, you can grab them. I will. Awesome. Our first check is for the Connecticut Metropolitan Council of Governments for $500,000. We have uh, from them Matthew Folder, Patrick Carlton, and Hannah Riegel. If you could come up here, that would be wonderful. The community-wide assessment grant will be used to address sites throughout the greater Bridgeport area, including the cities of Bridgeport, towns of Easton, Fairfield, Monroe, Stratford, and Trumbull. And with over 10 years of Bridgeport, of a, a Brownfields assessment and grant experience, the city will have received a total of $2.4 million to date. Congratulations. Okay, next, <clears throat> Town of East Hampton, $500,000, and David Cox, the town manager, is here. The community-wide assessment grant will address the impacts of priority sites in the town's village center, including the Summit Thread North Mill site, the Summit Thread South site, and the former East Hampton Bell Company site. With a history of three assessment grants and two cleanup grants, the town will have received a total of $1.4 million to date. By the way, don't go too far with those checks. We're having everybody come up at the end. <laughs> All right, the town of Killingly, $800,000, and Mary Calorio, the town manager, is here today. A first-time grant winner, the town of Killingly will be using their newly acquired funds to assess and clean up several properties located within the town of Killingly's Enterprise Corridor Zone. Okay, Naugatuck Valley Council of Governments. Rick Dunn was unable to be here today, but Ricardo Rodriguez, Aaron Boudris, and Steve Perry, and Heidi Cornell are here today. Come on up. The Naugatuck Valley Council of Governments will receive $3 million to assist in the continuation and initiation of Brownfields cleanup projects throughout the Naugatuck Valley region. With this new investment, the council will have received over $14 million to date since 1996. 
City of New London. With a $1 million grant, the attendees are Mayor Michael Passero and Tom Bombria. The City of New London will receive a million dollars to provide funding for cleanups in their member communities with a focus on the City of New London's downtown area, including priority sites such as the former Capitol Theater and Guard Arts Center. With a history of three assessment grants, the city will have received over $1.6 million to date. The Norwalk Redevelopment Agency receiving $2 million, and Mark Dillon, the development manager, is here. The $2 million cleanup grant will be used to clean up the Webster Street lot that used to be occupied by a mix of residential, commercial, and manufacturing industries that's now contaminated with hazardous substances and petroleum. Since receiving their first grant back in 2006, the agency will have received $3.3 million to date. And finally, last but not least, with the City of, of Waterbury Mayor giving the City of Waterbury Mayor the grant, we'll receive a $1 million grant to clean up and expand the Brass City Food Hub site. The site formerly housed industrial manufacturing companies and was last used for the manufacturing of buttons and brass goods. With this new investment, the city will have received over $3.4 million of funding since 2008. So congratulations to all recipients, and thank you so much for your commitment to transform our communities. And let me hand it over for the last word back to the mayor. Thank you, sir. I just want to take uh, just another moment to thank each and every person who is here today uh, that supports these initiatives, uh, especially our staff in the background, Angela Giuliani, Mike LeBlanc, uh, Corp Council and CFO. Uh, these are the folks that do all the heavy lifting. We get to sit here and, uh, and celebrate all this, but they're the ones, uh, as in all of your agencies, we all know uh, it takes a village, and the village consists of the people in the back room that are doing most of the heavy lifting, all the work, and I'm just grateful to have such a great team, and I'm also grateful to have all you great people here from all over Connecticut today, and congratulations on your hard work for your awards. I also want a special thanks to our Region 1 Administrator and our Commissioner of Deep. This is what matters, folks. This is what matters for the future of our children right here. The quality of life, safe environment. This is what it's all about so that these kids, when they walk by here every day on their way to school, they can say, wow, things are really happening in my city and town and all of your cities and towns will be uh, rewarding from all of what you see here today. So thank you and thank you to the press and the media that are here as well. We're gonna come on up and we're gonna have a, another photo opportunity for sure. And uh, Senator Blumenthal, absolutely. Uh, I, I just want to mention uh, it really is a delegation effort to make this funding possible. Uh, my colleague, my great friend and colleague Chris Murphy, represented by Kenny Kern uh, here today. Uh, as you've noticed, these grants are statewide and all of us work together as a team. Uh, we fight above our weight because we're united. Uh, and across the state, our colleagues in the delegation work together. So a big thanks to them. They couldn't be here today, but thank you to all of them. One other thing, it's only possible because of and, and maybe most important, uh, as Johanna, Johanna Hayes pointed out to me, uh, it is only possible because Joe Biden is President of the United States today. Uh, and to, to, to quote uh, President Biden on occasion, this is a big friggin' deal. So, <laughs> and sometimes he substitutes another word for that one. Uh, so thank you all for being here and very proud to celebrate with uh, Mayor O'Neill and Mayor Passero and others who are here today. Thank you. Thank you.